Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got another deviation from our normal car videos. I've been moving and moving into the new house. I decided to move all my old Z-Wave smart switches. So I had these ones from maybe like three or four years ago. These were the Z-Wave 4005 model. And then I got the ZW 4008 model here. And these are all made by GE or they're all private labeled for GE, but they're made by Jasco. Anyway, the reason why I have the one newer one is these older ones have been dropping like a log. I've lost literally like probably seven or eight of them in the last year or so. Luckily I was still in warranty and Jasco sent me a bunch of replacements. So one of the things I noticed first off with the newer version of this, they come with a QR code that helps you pair your smart things and any other hubs that you have. On the old version, what you have to do is kind of flip it back and forth and hope that your Z-Wave hub picks it up so you can actually pair it to your system. One other thing I noticed when I was installing it is that the newer version of it is a lot slimmer so it fits into these boxes a little bit better. The old version was probably another maybe half inch or quarter inch thicker. That would get in the way of a lot of the wiring inside the box already so that's a huge plus that they reduce the size. I think they knew that these were defective because a bunch of people I know have the same one and they have the same failures and they get the same replacements. Another good thing I noticed is they got rid of these stupid tabs right here. So the old version had these tabs on both sides. And if you installed them into a single gang, you didn't have to worry about breaking them off. But if you had to install them side by side, you would actually have to break those things off. You actually fit them in the gang box. The new one eliminated that, so it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about that on the sides. For any modern house since NEC 2008, they've been required to have a neutral in all the switch boxes. If you have an older house, you're probably out of luck because Back before they changed the code, they didn't have neutral, so all you had was a hot going into the box. So with that, you can't really run these smart switches because you need a neutral. So the only way to do that is you have an electrician run a neutral from your load down to your switch, which is a big pain in the ass, especially if you don't have conduit or if your walls are insulated. And one of the main reasons why you really need the neutral on here because there are electronics in here that run even though the switch is on and off. So on a traditional switch, all you do is intercept the hot leg on these two lugs right here, basically open the switch and close the switch. And that's all you have to worry about, plus the green ground on top. Now, with all the electronics and the computers and everything in here, and it's actually communicating all the time with your hub, so you need that neutral, and then you need the load to actually power these devices. You also notice that these have the No 120 on the side for the three-way traveler. So if you have a smart switch, you can't do your regular traditional three-way. You can use the wire that's already there. You actually have to buy the mating switch for the three-way application and wire it up the way that the manufacturer has you wire it up. So here's an add-on three-way switch that I'm gonna be adding on today because my kitchen lights here are three-way. So I'm gonna do the overhead kitchen lights, the sink lights over here, and then the under cabinet lights which are all on the same bank except for the three-way. So the add-on switch is pretty basic. All it needs is a neutral, and then you connect your traveler right here. The key to doing the three-way on this is connecting the load through to the main switch, so that way when you click this switch, it actually sends a signal to the main switch and turns it on from there. So here's what we're gonna be working with today. We got this three gang right here that does the kitchen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. Then, then I got another double gang on the other side that does the three way and also my breakfast nook. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that breakfast nook today also. Before we start, make sure you turn off the power at the breaker to your switches or whatever you're working with. So luckily I'm in the kitchen in the family room area and the kitchen is on a separate circuit. So I still have power and light behind me to do some work. Speak of the devil, so as we were actually talking about this and I went to hit the breaker to turn off the lights, I realized one of these switches that were already in the house, which is also the same GE Z-Wave switch, started acting up. So you can hear it clicking and beeping. And that's the same symptoms I get on mine when they died before. So it looks like this one is on its way out. I've had a few that did this and eventually fixed themselves when it cycled on. But it looks like this thing's been just beeping for the last like couple minutes. I'm gonna mess with that later. Probably just replace it with one of mine. Luckily, Jasco sent me a bunch of warranty replacement ones. So to start, we wanna take apart the switch plate cover. So these got six of these flat heads right here. I find it easiest to switch the bit from a flat head to a Phillips to take apart these guys in here. So 
So we want to pull all three of them out and kind of inspect the wiring, make sure we understand everything that's inside of here. So taking a look at inside, so here's what we got. So we got three switches in here. These two are the regular switches. So you can see them, they're basic. They basically just have two lugs for the hot coming in and a ground right there, like I discussed earlier as a basic switch. Then over here, what we got is a three-way and the switch is a little bit different. So you'll notice there's three lugs on here for the power. What you usually have is two golds and a black and that kind of indicates which one's load and which one's line and which one's the pass through to the other side on three way. And you also have the green copper ground right here inside the box. So my house is a 2017, so it's pretty new and it's within the newer code. So you'll see in here, you'll see a whole bunch of black wires, which is this one right here. And that's the main line coming in from so back there. You'll see like the, the bundle of white wires. That's the neutral all coming in here and joining right there. And then you also see all the grounds coming in here as the bare copper. So the main thing you wanna look for is to make sure you have a neutral in your box to make this work. Start off, what we wanna do is just start taking the power apart and the wires apart. So usually I just take apart the ground, so I unscrew the green wire. Usually I find that the ground is the hardest thing to put back into the new switch, especially when they do the ones where share a common ground across all of them. Luckily on this one, everybody's got their own single ground, so this should be pretty easy just to pop out, round out. So next thing you wanna do is you wanna take the leads out. So the leads generally on a new house or anything that's done by a professional, they usually just splice and then they just use the compression fit. So you just twist it back and forth and it slides right out. A lot of people that do it themselves usually end up using the lugs and they screw it down. I usually try just to push it through the two holes and I only use these side ones if I have to add another circuit or additional circuits to it. So I've already broken off all the tabs on all these because I said since I gotta put three of these in one box, I wanna need as much room as I can. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna be able to connect the ground. So the ground, just make sure that the, your green is loose up here. Get your bare copper wire, kind of get that thing into there. Screw that thing down. So I wanna get the two leads in here. So on these switches, you actually have to put the leads in and then you tighten it down with the side screws. And you'll notice back here, there's one that says line and one that says load. So in a setup like this, the load will be going to the wire and that's going up to the fixture. The line is that bundle that's coming from the fuse box or the building. You wanna tighten that down. You wanna pull your neutral bundle out of here so you could actually get this guy in there. That's a huge bundle. There's probably like seven or eight wires in there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hook up one here and then I'm gonna daisy chain the other three. That's probably the easiest way to do the neutral. So you wanna just tuck this first one back in, the neutral back in to the back of the box into there. So I'm gonna get move on to the next one now. Locate your line and your load after you do your ground. up connecting that third neutral right here that's going to daisy chain over to the last switch to this guy so that thing's all set over here so now we got to determine which side of the three-way we're on so after studying the wire and I'll show you guys a graphic on the screen right now what I determined is so this side is the side that's getting power from the circuit so this is where the main switch is going to be this main switch is going to actually going to send power to the switch on the other side of the three-way and that in turn is going to send power up to the light fixture so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the traveler, which is the red right here, as the line and the traveler to the remote switch. We'll determine the line and the load depending on which one is going into that bundle and which one's going up into the ceiling. And once we determine that, we can wire up the switch over here. And once I'm done there, I'm gonna go to the other end and I'm gonna connect the traveler up to that remote add-on switch and that's gonna control this guy over here. So here's a more up-close look at the wiring for the three-way, which is very important to see. So you can see Right here is the line. The line goes into that bundle right here that goes to the breaker. Traveler and the load is the twisted red pair right here that you'll see. If you guys don't have a twisted red pair in yours, just check to see if it's going up together into the building right there. You got your ground, copper ground up there, and you got your neutral jumping to the next switch 
and then going back to the ultimate neutral inside there. So that is pretty much your three-way on this side. So we're over here on the other side where we're going to put the add-on three-way. So you can see right here, I've already installed the Z-Wave on the dual gang. This dual gang has so much more room than that triple gang just because there's so few wires in here. Over here, you can see those twisted pair red and black right here. So those two are coming from the other end. So remember, the switch is going to be sending power to this guy right here on this side. So what I have to do is take this guy and just jump it to this black right here that's going up to the light fixture right now. I'm going to take this red and put it on the traveler of the add-on switch and then connect the neutral and we're done over here. ground popped off I kind of discovered that there's a hole right here that you can just stick it in so I ended up bending that U out and just using that hole and then I'm just gonna tighten it there which makes life a lot easier so now that we got everything plugged up and connected I went ahead and turned on the breaker so we're gonna test to make sure everything works so the first thing I'm gonna test is my under cabinet lights turned on over there the next one is the the sink lights just turned on so that works and then the last one we're gonna test main kitchen lights the three-way looks like it works so right there so over here we got the add-on switch so it's working so that's a success and then here's the breakfast mix which i just added right here so that one works so thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video guys i hope you guys found this video useful if you did please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel i usually do car content but when i have projects around the house that are actually useful for others i go ahead and do diys like this remember guys if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching all the way to the end and i'll talk to you guys next time